In this presentation, we'll examine synthesis of proteins. Information in a messenger RNA sequence is decoded to form a protein. In this process, a triplet of nucleotides, a codon, in the messenger RNA codes for a particular amino acid. Translation occurs on the ribosome. Ribosome is ribosomal RNA protein complex. Transport RNA play a crucial role in the translation process. Structures of all transport RNA molecules are similar, as they have to interact with the ribosome and protein factors required for translation. Here is secondary structure, also uh, functions of particular structural elements of uh, tRNA are indicated. If you wish, you can pause the video here and examine this in more detail. We covered secondary structure of tRNA earlier. tRNA molecules are L-shaped with anticodon at one end and amino acid group, that means amino acid to be incorporated into protein attached to the other end. A bacterial cell contains about 30 to 40 different transport RNAs, while a mammalian cell can have as many as 150. That means that different transport RNAs bear the same amino acid but have different anticodons. Such transport RNAs are called isoacceptor transport RNAs. First step in protein synthesis is charging of transport uh, RNA or aminoacylation reaction. That's the process of attaching of amino acid to transport uh, to transfer RNA. So transfer RNA molecule covalently binds to a particular amino acid and reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme tRNA acyl synthase. The reaction is called aminoacylation and product is a charged transport RNA. Such tra charged transport RNA bi binds through its anticodon region to a triplet codon in the messenger RNA. The synthase must attach the correct amino acid to a transport RNA that bears the corresponding anticodon. And so for that reason, transport RNA, transfer RNA acyl synthase interacts both with transfer RNA anticodon as well as the acylation site. And the two sites are situated on the opposite sides of the tRNA molecule. The reaction proceeds uh, through formation of an ester bond between amino acid and 3' prime hydroxyl of ribose that is at the 3' prime end of a tRNA molecule. In the first step, amino acid reacts with ATP to form amino acyl AMP molecule. But that's basically adenylated amino acid. So that activates amino acid because amino acid is now in the form of mixed anhydride, which is highly reactive. Formation of this process, amino acyl AMP is irreversible because uh, byproduct is pyrophosphate and in the next step pyrophosphate is hydrolyzed with water and that's what makes the overall process favorable. Now adenylated amino acid reacts with transfer RNA to give amino acyl transfer RNA or charged transfer RNA. There are 20 different enzymes, 20 different uh, transfer RNA acyl synthase enzymes uh, each one for a uh, particular amino acid. The same enzyme catalyzes reaction by all of the isoacceptor transfer RNAs. Class one enzymes initially attach an amino acid to two prime hydroxyl of ribose, which is then shifted to three prime position. Class two enzymes attach amino acid directly to three prime hydroxyl of ribose. Here is the same process shown schematically where enzyme amino acyl transfer RNA synthase is shown in blue. And so that shows the enzyme. Uh, for example, in this case, methionine is going to be attached to its specific transfer RNA. So it shows how transfer RNA interacts with the enzyme 
So two opposite ends of it react with the enzyme. Also that ATP molecule is attached to the enzyme and methionine. And of course, upon completion of the reaction, uh, charged transfer RNA leaves the enzyme. Ribosome is the site of protein synthesis. In it, messenger RNA and amino acids come together to form a polypeptide. A ribosome consists of two subunits, each containing both ribosomal RNA and protein. The subunits are large and small subunits, which are designated in terms of their sedimentation coefficients. And in turn, sedimentation coefficients are related to particles' mass. Heavier particles have larger sedimentation coefficients. The two units are held together through, by RNA-RNA contacts with magnesium ions providing ionic bridges between the phosphate groups. So each RNA uh, chain or polymer has uh, ribose phosphate uh, backbone and uh, the two of them interact through negatively charged phosphate parts of the backbone, which are bridged together through uh, magnesium ions, basically as salt bridges. Messenger RNA passes through the small subunit. Large subunit contains three binding sites for transport RNA, sorry, for transfer RNA. Uh, Reogression sites recognize transfer RNAs by, by their T size C loop. The three recognition sites are designated as A, P, and E. A stands for amino acid. That site binds the incoming charged transfer RNA. That will deliver the next amino acid in the chain. P stands for peptide and is the site of, site of peptide chain formation. The transfer RNA in P site is attached to the peptide chain. Finally, E stands for exit. E site is occupied by transfer RNA it has just delivered its amino acid to the chain and is leaving the ribosome. The anticodons of transfer RNA extend into the small subunit to pair up with messenger RNA codons, while amino acid groups are in the large subunit, which is the site of the peptide bond formation. Translation of messenger RNA requires an initiator tRNA bearing methionine or formyl methionine in bacteria. The initiator transfer RNA does not recognize other methionine codons elsewhere in the sequence. During the elongation phase of protein synthesis, an elongation factor interacts with amino acyl transfer RNA and delivers them to the A site of the ribosome. The initiator transfer RNA is the only one that binds directly to the P site without first binding to the A site. Amino acyl transfer RNAs are delivered to the ribosome in a complex with the elongation factor, which in turn is bound to a molecule of GTP. Elongation factor binds to transfer RNA by recognizing the acceptor stem and one side of side of T size C loop, which are common to all transfer RNAs. As a result, all transfer RNAs bind to elongation factor with approximately the same affinity. Transpeptidation or formation of a peptide bond is catalyzed by ribosomal RNA in the large ribosomal subunit. Amino acyl transfer RNAs are delivered to the ribosomes by recognizing the complementary messenger RNA codon at the A site. This is the limiting step of polypeptide synthesis as there is competition by various amino acid transfer RNAs for the binding site. Correct codon-anti-codon -codon match results in conformational change of the ribosome, which induces hydrolysis of GTP that is bound to the allocation factor. Therefore, GTP provides energy for protein synthesis. As a result of hydrolysis, elongation factor dissociates from the ribosome and amino acyl group can be incorporated into the polypeptide chain by transfer from peptidyl group, the growing peptide chain, from transfer RNA to the P site 
in the B site to the transfer RNA in the A site. And as a result, transfer RNA in the P site is deacylated. The new peptidyl transfer RNA then moves to the P site and deacylated transfer RNA moves to the A site, to the E site. Anticodon of the transfer RNA in the E site is not paired up with a messenger RNA codon that is about to exit the ribosome. Translation terminates when a release factor reorganizes a messenger RNA stop codon in the A site of the ribosome. With a stop codon in A position, the ribosome cannot bind an amino acid transfer RNA, but instead binds a release factor. In eukaryotes, single protein ERF1 reorganizes all three stop codons. And then additional factors then prepare the ribosome for another round of translation. And here is translation process shown a little bit differently, a little bit different schematics. Uh, I don't remember where I took it from. This is not my illustration. I took it somewhere from the web. So it's one of the images that is related to trans, uh, translation of uh, proteins. So if you look it, look it up, simply look at translation of proteins and images and you will find it. The polypeptide released from a ribosome is not fully functional and may have to undergo post-translational processing. Chaperone proteins bind newly synthesized polypeptides to facilitate their folding in correct three-dimensional shape and correct tertiary structure. Large chaperone complexes form barrel-shaped structures that encloses a folding protein. Proteins to be secreted must pass through a membrane. An RNA protein complex called signal recognition particle directs poly peptides bearing an N-terminal signal sequence to a membrane for translocation. Additional modifications to newly synthesized proteins include proteolytic processing, that means hydrolysis of parts of it, and the attachment of carbohydrate, lipid, or other groups. So this completes a presentation on synthesis of proteins.